Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. Today, we are diving into another exciting new feature in C-Sharp 13, Simplified Array Access using the caret operator for implicit indexing. This new addition makes working with arrays cleaner, faster and way more intuitive. So before we get started, just a quick reminder to subscribe my channel, hit the red button and don't forget to click on the little bell icon, that way you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Okay, without any further delay, let's get started. C sub 13, what is implicit indexing with the caret operator? Okay, let's first understand what we mean by implicit indexing. In C sharp, implicit indexing refers to the ability to access elements in an array or collection using a shorthand notation that simplifies the process. With the introduction of the caret operator, we can now access array elements from the end of the array instead of counting from the beginning. This means that instead of calculating the index based on the length of the array, we can use the caret operator to refer directly to position in the array in reverse order. Okay, let's understand it with the help of examples shown over here. Okay, so let's see first the traditional way to get the last element of an array. So let's say you have an array of numbers. Let's say we have integer array of numbers that contains five elements, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So, in traditional c -sharp, if you want to get the last element, we would have to use the length of the array minus 1. That's what I have written int last number is equal to numbers, numbers dot length minus 1. How many elements are there in this numbers array? We have 5. So, numbers dot length, it is going to give me 5 minus 1, 4 because the array start with the 0 end. So, we are going to get the 50 value when we are going to pass this position numbers 4. So, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So, we are going to get 50 value. So similarly, if you want to get second last number, how we can do that? We just need to subtract 2 from the length of the array. So that's what I have written numbers dot length minus 2. Similarly, for the third last number, how we are going to get? We just need to subtract 3 from the length of the array. That's what I have written numbers, numbers dot length minus 3. So it is just going to give me the third last number from this int array. So this is how we are going to get this last element of array, second last of the number, third last number and so on in the traditional fashion. But with the C sharp 13, we can simplify this to with the new caret operator. So that's what I have written examples over here how to get the last element of array with the help of C sharp 13 caret operator. So again we have array of numbers over here. So int array numbers is equal to 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So we have 5 elements into this int array numbers. So here also let's say I want to face the last element of an array. How we can do that? We just need to write numbers opening bracket closing bracket and in between we just need to write the caret 1. So this caret 1 it represents the last element. How easy it is, right? We just need to write the caret 1 and it is just going to give me the 50 value. So this is the last number. Similarly, if you want to face the second last number, we just need to write the caret 2. It is just going to give me the 40 value from this array. Similarly, third last number, we just need to write the caret 3. It is just going to give me this third last number. How easy it is, right? So this makes our code cleaner and more intuitive, especially when working with the longer array. Okay, so now let's talk about the benefits of the caret operator for array manipulation. Okay, so now you might be wondering why does this matter? Well, this feature has some clear benefits. Number one, cleaner code. By using the caret operator, we can make our code more readable and expressive, which is especially helpful when working with longer arrays or list. Number two, less error prone. Avoiding length minus one calculation reduces the chance for off by one errors, which are easy mistakes to make when coding under pressure. When developer is doing some coding and he is under the pressure, there is a possibility then they can, you know, write length minus one calculation something different. So we can avoid this with the help of new caret operator. Number three, better for dynamic arrays. So this is particularly useful when working with arrays or list whose length isn't always known ahead of the time. So with caret operator, we can just specify what we want from the end and C sharp handles the rest. All right, let's go over a few scenarios where using the caret operator could make our code more efficient. Number one, accessing recent logs or events. Let's suppose we are working with a log of recent events to get the last few entries. Caret operator can make our code cleaner and faster to write. We have seen how we are going to get this last element so easily with the help of caret operator. Second one is the processing buffer. If we are handling a data buffer and need recent data from the end, this caret operator saves time and improves readability. 
identity. Number three, user session data. When tracking user session data, we might often want to access the most recent session or action without calculating indices manually. So here, caret operator is going to perform very well. In each of these cases, the caret operator allows us to quickly access the last few items without worrying about the exact length of the array or list. C sub 13 using the caret operator in object initializer. One of the coolest part of this feature is that we can now use the caret operator directly in object initializer. Here is the practical example. Let's suppose we are creating a class to store a list of daily temperature readings and we want to set the values in reverse order. How we can do that? So let's understand with the help of examples on over here. So here what I have done, I have created one class named weekly temperature that has a property named temperature readings which is an integer array of size 7. Consider it as a week of temperature readings. So this array is in a slice and empty array with the new int 7. Then what I am doing, I am just creating an instance of this weekly temperature class. That's what I have written where temperature is equal to new weekly temperatures. And it initializes the array by filling it from the end, starting with the most recent temperature at caret 1. That's what I have written caret 1 is equal to 68, caret 2 is equal to 70, caret 3 is equal to 72, caret 4 is equal to 69, caret 5 is equal to 71, caret 6 is equal to 73, caret 7 is equal to 75. So basically what I am doing over here, I am just assigning this value from the last. That's what I have written caret 1 is equal to 68, which represents the most recent reading that I have read that I am assigning to this caret 1 position at the last position. Similarly, caret 7 is equal to 75. It's, it is the oldest reading. Okay, so this way our array's logic remains clear even when we work in the reverse order. Okay, so let's switch to the Visual Studio and see all these things in action. All right, so here we are in Visual Studio. Here I am going to show the demo of the two approaches to accessing and initializing elements in arrays, highlighting the new implicit indexing features with the caret operator introduced in C Sharp 30. To show the demo, what I have done, I have created one console application named implicit indexing demo that has program.cs file. In program.cs file, first of all, I have added necessary namespaces. Here, I have added using system. So This namespace helps us to use the basic functions like console.write line. In program.cs file, we have two classes. First, weekly temperature class and the second, we have program class. So, in weekly temperature class, we have one property named temperature readings, which is an integer array of size 7. So, this array is initialized as an empty array with the new int 7. Consider this array that is going to hold as a week of temperature reading. In program class, there is a main method which is an entry point of this application. First of all, in this main method, what I am doing, I am printing title as demo. Demo of simplified array access with the caret operator for implicit indexing in C sharp 13 in the console window. That's what I have written this state. So here, I have mentioned two scenarios. Scenario number one, using a standard array with the older method, that is the traditional way. So here what I am going to do, I am going to use the traditional way to access elements from an array using the length property to calculate indices. Scenario number 2, here I am going to use the new implicit indexing with the caret operator and object in slide. So here in scenario 2, we will be using new approach using the caret operator to access elements from the end of the array. How we can do that? We will be witnessing it. Coming to the scenario number 1, here I have an integer array named numbers. That's what I have written int array numbers is equal to 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So basically this array contains 5 elements. Then accessing the last element in a traditional way, how we can do that? First, we need to calculate the index of the last element as numbers.length minus 1 and retrieves the value at that position. That's what I wrote. Int last number old is equal to numbers numbers.length minus 1. So basically, I am just finding first the length of the array. So numbers.length, it is just going to give me the length of the array. And then I am just writing minus 1 because I want to fetch this last number from the int. And as we know that array start with the 0 int. That's what I am just subtracting minus 1 over here. So it will give me the last number and what i'm doing i'm just printing these things into console window last number traditional way last number old here what i'm going to do i'm just going to access the elements from the end in the traditional way how we can do that so that first of all i'm just printing this statement elements from the end traditional way and here i have written for loop in for loop i have written int i is equal to one semicolon i less than equal to numbers dot length so basically i'm just going to iterate this for loop until we get this last number of this array right so numbers dot length and then i plus plus and then what i'm going to do i'm just going to access the element from the last 
in the reverse order. That's what I have written element i from the end numbers numbers dot length minus one minus i. So whenever i is going to get incremented, this i value is going to get replaced with that number, right? So this statement is just going to get executed based on the number of elements we have in this array, right? So this statement is going to get printed into the console. Now coming to the scenario number two, where we are going to use this new implicit indexing with the caret operator, and also we will be using this object initializer. Okay, that's what I'm just going to print this statement into console window. Scenario number two, C sharp 13's way, implicit indexing with object initialized. Here what I have done, I have created an instance of this weekly temperature. That's what I have written where temperature is equal to new weekly temperature. Inside that, I have accessed these properties and assigning this value to the property. What I have written temperature readings is equal to curly process, caret 1 equal to 68. So basically, I'm just going to assign this most recent reading over here. So caret 1 is equal to 68, caret 2 is equal to 70. And it will goes up to carrot 7 is equal to 75. So carrot 7 is equal to 75. This is the oldest reading that I'm going to store into this temperature readings array. Then I'm going to access this last element the new way, the C sharp 13 way. How we are going to use that? For that, I'm just going to use this carrot operator and I'm just going to write 1. So basically, it is just going to give me this last temperature. Last temperature new is this one, 68. So I'm going to get this value 68 when we are going to execute this statement. Temperatures dot temperature reading carrot 1. And then I'm just going to print this last temperature new into the console window. Last temperature C sharp 13 way, new way last temperature new right and then what i'm going to do i'm just going to accessing element from the end in the new way that is the c sharp 13 way okay so here i'm just going to print this statement temperature readings from the end c sharp 13 way and again here we have the for loop for loop what i have written int i1 int i is equal to 1 i is less than equal to temperatures dot temperature readings dot length and then i plus plus and here i'm going to get access the value of this temperature arrays from the end that's what i have written temperature i from the end temperatures dot temperature reading caret operator i right so this i value is going to get changed as long as this for loop is going to get executed right so int i is equal to 1 at the first time we will be getting the last value then i is equal to 2 then we will be getting the second last value and so on so this makes it very clear and concise accessing elements from the end without needing length calculation over so here i have not used the length calculator right for fetching the value from this temperature reading array right i just use this caret operator and then i value and i value is going to get changed as long as this for loop is going to get executed right okay so now you saw how the program is structured let me execute this program and show this output to you okay so output got appeared into this console window if you see this output demo of simplified array access with the caret operator for implicit indexing c sharp 13 got printed then scenario number one traditional way a standard array access so here last number in traditional way we got the 50 because we have stored the value in the array n 20 30 40 50 and 50 was the last number that's why this last number got printed as a 50 over here and then elements from the end traditional way i'm going to retrieving with the help of array dot length minus one that will give me the position and then i'm going to utilize that position to fetching the element from the last that's what this element one from the end 50 got printed element two from end 40 got printed element 3 from the end 30 got printed element 4 from the end 20 got printed and finally element 5 from the end 10 got printed so this is the first value got printed 10 right but we have access the value in the reverse order with the help of the traditional now come to the scenario number two that is the c sharp 13's way implicit indexing with the object initializer here i'm going to access this last temperature value in c sharp 13 new way that i got as a 68 and we got this value because here I have used caret 1. So caret 1 signifies I am going to retrieve the value from the last position. That's what this last temperature value got printed. And then temperature reading from the end C sharp 13 way, temperature 1 from the end 68, temperature 2 from the end 70, and so on. And temperature 7 from the end 75 got printed. So I am accessing the value from the last. That's how this output got printed. Okay, so that brings me to end of my session today. To sum up, Today, we had an overview of the new implicit index access features in C Sharp 13 and .NET 9. The caret operator may be a small addition, but it's a powerful one that can really streamline your code, making it cleaner, less error prone, and just easier to work with. That's all for this video, guys. If you like this video, hit the like button, share it with your friends and colleagues, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done already. Thanks for watching. See you next video.